Let's play a game. A word association game. I'll say a word and you think of an image. Ready? Tree? Camouflage? Jesuit. What did you envision when you heard these words? Many people, when they hear the word Jesuit, think of courageous missionaries to distant lands, top-tier universities and first-rate law schools. But trees and Jesuits have one thing in common. Both conceal their true inner structure under a showy and distracting disguise. The only way a person can discern the true shape of a tree is to wait for winter, when all of the outer layers of camouflaging leaves are stripped away. The same holds true for the Jesuit order. Once the camouflaging layers of chastity and poverty, missionary zeal and notable institutions of learning are stripped away, what is revealed at the center of it all is shocking. The Jesuit order is the mastermind behind some of the largest frauds in history. It was through the influence of the Jesuit order that the true shape of the earth, as flat and enclosed by a protective dome, was concealed. Jesuit astronomers, scientists and mathematicians propagated belief in a globe Earth spinning through a galaxy of incomprehensible size. Jesuits also promoted scientific theories that contradict scripture. Jesuit priest Father George Lemaitre authored the Big Bang Theory while other Jesuits, from the Pope on down, have endorsed the theory of evolution. But Jesuit duplicity does not end there. The Jesuit order is directly responsible for another deception. A lie so vast, camouflaged with so many twisted layers of assumption, that very few people are even aware of its existence. And yet, the life of every single individual on Earth is impacted by this fraud. It's a calendar, a counterfeit measure of time, hiding the Creator's day of worship. The Gregorian calendar in use throughout the world today masquerades its week as an extension of the Biblical week. It is assumed that Sunday, as the first day of the week, is the day of Yahushua's resurrection. Most Christians today worship on Sunday for this very reason. Saturday, as the seventh day of the Gregorian week, is assumed to be the seventh day Sabbath of the Fourth Commandment. These assumptions are based on two other assumptions. Continuous time and a smooth transition from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. Time is continuous. Because of this, it is assumed that the modern week of Sunday through Saturday has cycled without interruption ever since Yahweh declared, let there be light. But there's more to this. When the Gregorian calendar replaced the earlier Julian calendar, no days of the week were lost. Thursday, October 4th, was immediately followed by Friday, October 15th. This is fact. Ten dates were dropped from the calendar, but the weekly cycle itself remained undisturbed. From these two assumptions, the Jesuits control the worship times of all who calculate their days of worship by the modern calendar. Now, to uncover the truth, it is necessary to dig deep, far into the past to when Julius Caesar established the Julian calendar. The Julian calendar was introduced by Julius Caesar, after whom it was named, in 46 BC. Prior to this time, the calendar of the Roman Republic, like all ancient calendars, was lunisolar. The early Julian week was an eight-day week. The letters A through H designated the days of the week. This was the calendar used by Rome wherever it went. It would not have been used by the Jews of Yahushua's day. And indeed, it wasn't. The Jews of Yahushua's time, the early Christians, the apostles, all used the lunisolar calendar established at creation and handed down by Noah and his sons. 
The lunisolar calendar of creation had a seven-day week, but it did not have a continuous weekly cycle. Months began with the new moon, and the weekly cycle restarted each month. The result, as borne out in scripture, was that the seventh-day Sabbath always fell on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th days of every month. Jewish scholars acknowledged this fact, stating, The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. Toward the end of the first century, a seven-day week began to be used in the Julian calendar. However, this week did not come from the Jews or the biblical week. When the eight-day Julian week was replaced by a week of seven days, the week came from the Persian mystery religions. It was a planetary week, named after the planetary gods. It is not to be doubted that the diffusion of the Iranian, Persian mysteries has had a considerable part in the general adoption by the pagans of the week with the Sunday as a holy day. The names which we employ unawares for the other six days came into use at the same time that Mithraism won its followers in the provinces in the West, and one is not rash in establishing a relation of coincidence between its triumph and that concomitant phenomenon. The Julian calendar itself provides additional proof that the week in use today does not come from creation. When the Julian calendar first adopted the pagan planetary week, it began on Saturday. The last day of the week was Dies Veneris, or in English, Friday. Over time, as the cult of Mithraism gained popularity, Sunday was made the most important day of the week and changed to the preeminent position as first day of the week. It seems as if some spiritual genius having control over the pagan world had so ordered things that the heathen planetary week should be introduced just at the right time for the most popular sun cult of all ages to come along and exalt the day of the sun as a day above and more sacred than all the rest. Surely this was not accidental. At the Council of Nicaea in the 4th century, the seven-day planetary week, starting on Sunday, was standardized as the official week of the Julian calendar. At that time, the biblical calendar, with its weekly cycle restarting each month, was actually outlawed for religious use. This decision was backed by the imperial might of Emperor Constantine the Great. To conciliate the pagans to nominal Christianity, Rome, pursuing its usual policy, took measures to get the Christian and pagan festivals amalgamated. And by a complicated but skillful adjustment of the calendar, it was found no difficult matter, in general, to get paganism and Christianity, now far sunk in idolatry, to shake hands. Historian and chronologer David Sidersky wrote, it was no more possible under Constance to apply the old calendar. This set the stage for the concealment of the biblical calendar, a situation of which the Jesuits, hundreds of years later, would take full advantage of. The Julian calendar was a thoroughly pagan method of computing time. After the Council of Nicaea, it continued unchanged for 1200 years. The very length of time it continued gave authority to the assumption that Sunday to Saturday had cycled continuously and without interruption since creation. 1200 years later, the time had come for the next layer of deception. In the 16th century, three significant events occurred. The Jesuit order was established to halt the progress of the Protestant Reformation. Nicolaus Copernicus was pressured by the Roman Catholic Church to publicize his theory of a globe Earth. This theory was embraced by the Jesuits and has been the standard scientific model for centuries. Pope Gregory XIII, with the help of Jesuit astronomer Christopher Clavius, modified the Julian calendar. The new calendar, still in use today, the Gregorian, was named after Pope Gregory XIII. Like a master chess player, 
Satan had been waiting centuries to get all his pieces into position to initiate his end-time game plan. The Jesuit order was his checkmate move. With the Jesuits dominating astronomy and related fields of science, Satan could advance a false concept of the universe. By creating a revolving globe lost in the illimitable realms of space, he could open the possibility of a hostile alien invasion. An alien invasion requiring a savior to protect mankind. This was the perfect setup for his final delusion where he would come, pretending to be Yahushua himself and claim to have changed the day of worship to Sunday. This masterful deception required a false calendar. If people knew that Saturday was simply the original first day of a pagan planetary week, they could not be deceived. So the Jesuits, as Satan's right-hand assistants, provided this false calendar and the accompanying assumption that it had cycled without interruption since creation because there was no interruption when it transitioned from the Julian calendar. The truth is, when Pope Gregory XIII's calendar was first introduced, all the Protestant countries soundly rejected it. Only Italy, Spain, Portugal, Poland and parts of France initially accepted the Pope's calendar. It was not until the middle of the 20th century that the entire world was united in using the Gregorian calendar for the civil calculation of time. The fact is, it's impossible to find the true seventh day Sabbath and the true day of Yahushua's resurrection using the Gregorian calendar. People today are ignorant of both the truth and the Jesuits' involvement in concealing that truth. The last chapter of the book of Daniel contains a promise that at the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Believers frequently interpret this text to be a reference to the advanced technology of the modern world. While technology certainly has advanced, the increased knowledge promised encompasses much more than airplanes or computers or RFID chips. The knowledge that has been increased is the exposure of all the lies that have been taught as truth. If you want to know the truth, there is no better time than now. If you want to know the true shape of the world, if you want to know the true day of worship, there is no better time than now. Knowledge is being increased. Likewise, if you want to be deceived, if you want to cling to errors, assumption and tradition, there is no better time than now. We are living in the closing scenes of Earth's history. Never before have the forces of good and the forces of evil worked so effectively at both revealing and concealing truth. Jesuit inventions and fabrications are not solely about science and math. They are not only about religion or philosophy or the occult. Underneath it all, it is about the human heart. To whom do you give your allegiance? Are you going to cling to a worldview and a religious foundation constructed 500 years ago by the Jesuits to deliberately hide the nearness and love of our Creator? Or are you going to seek the Creator and accept the truths revealed in His Word? The choice is yours.